Hi, this is Tweek. On today's episode of Tweaks with Tweek, we're going to make a door sign, but not just any door sign, a door sign for a very special little girl with a special message on it for her. So join us. The supplies you'll need for this project are some 1 8 inch plywood. You'll need some acrylic paint. You'll need some tin foil. You'll need some brushes, some scissors, some paper, a sharpie, a pencil. You'll need some wooden bead letters. And you'll need some tight bond wood glue and some varnish. So let's get going. This episode began in a bit of an amusing way, my daughter moved into a new place and there were three doors on one wall, all white. One led to a half bath, one led to a closet, and one led to the basement. And for a while, they were getting mixed up as to which door was which. Could I make a sign to help with that? I could, and I did. I made a sign for their bathroom, but not just any sign. This one says, commode. And all around it are all the different ways you might say bathroom, which was amusing. My grandson helped to make this with me and it was his house. And uh, these textures that we made I'm going to use in today's project, but this is where it originated. A little girl that we know turned three and I'm going to make her a beautiful little personalized door sign for her room. Extra special and I'll show you why. I began the project by drawing out a picture of a little girl, very similar to the one I'm going to surprise. And I took that and traced it out onto some plywood. Since this is several layers of plywood that I'm going to glue together, I had a background piece. And then we cut out the head piece. cut out the hair piece. So these different layers will help to augment the sign. So first step, I want to add a little bit of thickness by gluing them together. So when I attach the beads, they have a place to attach too. So let's get our tight bond glue. And I'm just going to very simply glue these two pieces together. This is a fast working glue. While it dries, I'll work on the next layer of the project. This is a sign that will be several layers thick. Okay, And then I'm going to put some clamps on there and then let it dry. So while the two base pieces are drying, I'm going to work on the next two pieces. One is a basic outline of her head. Here's my drawing. And the other was her hair. I just like the idea of it being layered. And what I'm going to do right now is to work on these two pieces while the other is drying. Do her hair and I'm going to take her little face and cut out like a puzzle. And just make some lines so that I know where her face is going to be on the board. I just want a general outline of where not to put the paint. So her face is going to be here. The background is going to match the other base that comes behind her. So let's work on these. Leave this over here as a reference. And I'll get my paints. Let's put down a little bit of cardboard. Since I want I want the board to stick to the board, glue board to board. So I'm not going to paint areas I don't have to paint. Her face and her hair. Let's do her face. We need a paintbrush and some colors. And I'm going to give her a nice rosy complexion. I'm going to mix up a little bit of rose beige, rosy beige. It's almost the color of the wood itself. I'm going to put just a little, little titch of pink in there. Just the tiniest bit. And if I end up putting in too much, I can add some more of the rosy beige. Definitely need more beige. But I like that tone, the skin tone. What have we got here? Okay, I'm liking that. I'm just going to follow the lines. 
You don't really have to be exacting because the other piece of wood is going to come in here. And I'm going to come all the way down the torso because I can fill in the dress colors later. I want a little, little, little bit of water to lighten this up a little bit. There we go. My acrylics are pretty thick. I'm going outside the line. It's okay. That area is done. I'm going to go with her hair. Okay. We got strawberry blonde going here. Hmm. I am going to take a combination of colors. This might take some work to get it how I think I like it. We'll see. I want a little bit of brown. And then whatever color I come up with, I'm going to highlight it. Let's see what we've got so far. This is going to be interesting. Huh. It's a really pretty caramely color, isn't it? Mm-hmm. This color is pretty. I just need to pump up the color a bit. So let's see how I can go about doing that. This is a nice color right here. Oh my goodness. So how many colors did I have to get or make to get this one? It's a little bit more orange than I wanted, but I can work with that. since this color actually resembles more of her dad's hair color than hers, I'm going to brighten it up with some highlights of gold. Golden blonde, strawberry blonde. I do like this color though. See, I've got plenty left in case. All right, I don't want to muck it up, but I'm going to add some of this. It's called a yellow orange. I used this earlier. How am I going to do this? What I want to do is take a dry brush and just pop it into the color. I'm going to follow her hairline and try to drag some of the color in. See if that works. Just play around till you get something that works. Oh, it's working. It's still a little bit dark. So what I think I'm going to do is let the brush strokes kind of be her hair. See? Okay, I'm going to add another layer. I've got some highlights in about a little more. I'm going to add some of this beige without the pink in it right to that same spot. I'm just going to keep working it till I like what I see. Same brush. Come in. Knock some of the paint back. Lightening up a little bit. I like that. Okay. Got more of a strawberry blonde thing going here. What do you think? Oh, a little too much there. We'll take care of that just by following what you think would be a hairline. Oh, I like that. I want a little more blonde into the strawberry blonde. So I am going to add a little bit of yellow. And then I'm going to highlight with a little more of the creamy beige. A rosy beige, whatever that color was. Kind of mixing all the paint colors together. I'm smiling because I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> Should I? I don't know. I'm going to stop there and add a little more highlights. I want a little bit more of this rosy beige. Would have thought you need that many colors to get here. <laughs> all right, got her hair done. Let's see how it looks with the little face. Good. And there's a the little face. Work on that next. Set the hair off to dry. I'm just going to take a pencil and rough in her face just a little bit to give me a little bit of guidance. So, um, eyes. She has big, big blue eyes. So we're going to come in here. And then over here, let's try. Look in her eyes, about the same height. The one seems a little bigger. And we're going to put a little bit of a pooter there. A 
um, a couple of lashes I can add those nose okay eyebrows I can add those and then the mouth down here okay now I've got my guide and I think while I'm at it I'll rough in her neck she has a little dress on going to be her favorite color, purple. And it just comes straight down. It's a shift. Straight down. Okay, I think that's good. It's a little bit swoopier than I wanted, but I think it'll be fine. All right, get my tiniest brush. Come here, tiny. Here you are. And we're going to go with some, she's got baby blue eyes. I'm going to take a little bit of this bright blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of dark. Oh, too much, but I can pull it away. Okay, I want some blue. Blue eyes coming in. some purple. Blue and red makes purple. Add a little bit of pink. Hopefully I get a pretty lavender. Okay, come here you. It's a pretty purple but it's a little bit too dark. I'm gonna add a little bit of this. All right, this is your dress girl. I'll just fade out down here because that's gonna get covered. to her cheek. I think I used up all my pink, so I have to come over here so I can get to you. So I want a little teeny bit of pink. I'm just going to water it down. There's a little bit of blush on her cheeks. She's got cheeks. Good. Now, let's see what happens. We add her hair, just dry now. Oh my goodness, now that's looking pretty nice. I'm gonna come in and put a background here with paint. So let's go ahead and get those pieces and we'll get them all painted. These came out very nicely, sanded, glued, and I'm gonna have some fun with this. I want to that's the outer layer of her sign. So I'm going to paint this area here. No sense in wasting the paint. We're going to glue these together. I'd like the wood and the glue to be together instead of the paint. But I'm going to make a quick line to guide myself as to where the paint's going. See, so just around the edges, so I'm not using that much paint. And then I'm going to come in here. Where's your hairs back again? I'm going to do the same coloring in here. I can do that. So I'm going to stick to 
easier to use with my color pattern. Hair goes here. For right now, head goes over here. And let's paint the outer edges of this. This is a fun way of painting. You take your colors that you like. And I'm going to go for some blues. And I want some light green. Oh, I want some fun colors. I'll get some of the pink in here. Uh, we're going to need a yellow. I'm just going to put little dots of color. Just squeeze them right onto the board. And just see the little, little teeny dots. I saw this done, a man who does beautiful artwork. And it's kind of a takeoff of what I saw him do. I just thought that was so fun and easy. Get your paint lined up. Take a piece of tin foil. I'm not gonna take a real big one because I have a little tiny area to cover up. Take a piece of paint and scrunch it up. Here we go. You just go with a tin foil and just blob it. as much painting as we do on that one. You could add more if you want. Add another color. All good. I'm going to set you aside to dry. And do the same thing in this area here. Add some paint. Hit it with the old foil and away we go. I'll use a little bit less this time because it's a smaller area. I just want the color combination to be there. All right and some yellow. I'm going to use it to come underneath her dress here, so right, here we go. I'm coming right across the bottom of her dress. Careful around her face. It looks like she's surrounded by flowers, doesn't it? Done with the foil. And dry. Alright, these pieces are dry. I can't wait to see what they look like when they're glued together. And you'll see why I didn't bother to waste paint there. I'll lay this down. Okay, so I'm going to glue that down with some tight bond glue. There we go. Go to the edge and press. Right now this one's going to go like this. Oh my gosh, this is going to be cute. All right, so this time I'm going to put the glue on the hair and smear it up a little bit. And this is where I want to use this edge as my guide. Okay, now I know this little girl, her favorite color is purple and she said pink, purple and or pink. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this pinky, wait a minute, this color is, oh that's primary red. Okay, that's fine. I'll mix some pink in here, I wanted to have more of a fuchsia color. I'm going to take the letters in her name and I'm going to paint them quickly and attach them right down here and let that dry. And these are little teeny letters. I'm just going to go across the top very lightly. Here we go. Done with the paint for a while. And I'm going to put them right across here. Give them a moment to dry. Oh boy. It's really, these are so little, but.
Anya, two favorite colors, purple and pink. We'll let that dry. And move on to the next part, which is the beads that are strung around this project. I purchased these beads online. They're letter beads, and they have a letter stamped on each side, four-sided bead. And I asked her dad, Anya's dad, describe your daughter for me. And he came up with some words that I proceeded to write out with these beads. Her name, Anya. She's smart, she's funny, inquisitive, she's determined. She's observant, energetic, she's a sweetheart. So I lined these up and I'm going to go around the piece with blue beads I had on hand on the bottom. And this is a piece of cord, like lanyard cord. So bring down on your sign. So this would be on the bottom. And then I'm going to very carefully, that's why I built up the layers a little bit so that the wooden letters would adhere and come all the way around. And then they'll meet up here. So I'm going to start on this side here, over here. So I want that T to be on the very edge. And once I get it started and get it to dry, then I can make it a little more taut. The cord's in there holding them together, thank goodness. But this is the part where I look to see that the best letter is out because sometimes the stamping on the wood isn't really good. So I want to make sure I've got the nice letters out. And then what I'm going to do is tack them with my hot glue gun and then bring in the tight bond to do the heavy lifting. But this is just to help me keep them straight. Tack it on. It'll act like a clamp and help me to get the rest of these on there. Okay, that, that's on there really well. I'm going to put some tight blend right here. And I'm going to use a Q-tip edge. And I'm just going to use this little stick edge to come in and add glue to the side. And buddy the piece up to the one next to it. Hold it in place. And the hot glue is really doing a good job of keeping them in line. And here we go all the way around. go around with the letters and the beads and get them all fixed. Like I said, before you fix them, you wanna make sure that you have everything spelled correctly. That's always nice. It took me a little over 20 minutes to do that. I used hot glue to tack it along and the uh, tight bond, which is still bonding. So what I'm gonna do quickly is add a little bit of varnish to go around and just pop the colors and protect it a little bit. So here we go. So pretty. It's like she's sitting in a really pretty garden. I'm quite pleased with how she's turning out. 
I'm going to use some bead chain here as my hanger. And what I'm going to do is push it through. I'm going to take the connector. You push the ball into the end of the connector and it sits in that little spot and you snap it in place. And you do the same on the other side. You let that little ball fall in there. Snap it in place. There we go. All right, and then we can pull the chain up. And there you have it. That's for you, Anya. You have a dad that loves you a lot, and this is proof of that. So if you like what you've seen here today, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to ring the bell so you know when another episode of Tweaks with Tweak is coming along. Until then, of all the descriptive words that your dad used on you, Anya, this one, sweetheart, we already knew that. See you again.